Hi, I'm Dr. Sandra Baston with the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service and I'm here today to give you a few knife skill instructions. Um, knives can be a very dangerous type of thing to use so you want to make sure that you have good knives um, that are sharp. And I have um, um, some really good knives um, that my father bought for me uh, 40 some years ago and they are um, keeping their sharpness um, and you want to make sure that you purchase good knives as well. If you have knives that are dull, there's a possibility that if you do cut yourself, then you'll tear your skin and you won't be able to get stitches. Whereas if you cut yourself with a sharp knife, um, you will be able to uh, re-add the, the, <laughs> the finger back. Um, so this is uh, called a chef's knife. Um, it's uh, used for chopping large things or lots of things. It um, has a, a, get one with a comfortable handle, but it should be held like you're holding a tennis racket. Um, I have a tendency to put my finger up here to give myself a little bit more um, control. And then I'm going to simply rock it back and forth with the tip down, and that gives me control as well. So if I have the tip down, I'm going to use the back part of my knife to cut what I'm cutting and then just rock it. I call it I'm rocking the baby. I'm making sure that I'm taking care of myself and the knife. Then we also have um, paring knives and I have a couple of paring knives that I really love. This one's real expensive and this one's really cheap. You'll see that both of them however have the metal going down through the, the um, center and this allows for a little bit more um, support and for them to, to last longer um, when you have them. You should probably clean your knife um, by hand. I have some I put in the dishwasher and when they are gone I um, um, replace them. Then there's also um, a, a vegetable peeler and this has all vegetable peelers have a rocking um, head on them so that you can use both sides of the sharpness of the tool and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. So we're going to start right now with um, a carrot and we're going to use our um, handy dandy tool. I like to call it, say I've got lots of handy dandy tools, but um, I'm going to use both sides to actually peel my carrot. And all my vegetables today were in my CSA um, this week and so I'm really tickled to have fresh uh, vegetables um, in, the, in my house. And so now you saw that was a whole lot faster than going Okay, so make sure that you use both sides of your um, container. Now, I have a wooden cutting board today, and a wooden cutting board um, is not allowed in commercial entities because as you chop on it, you actually sometimes put gro grooves in it, but the wooden cutting board is much um, more friendly to your knife. Underneath my wooden cutting board, um, I would want to put something to keep it from moving, and I could use a towel or I could use uh, just a damp paper towel, which is what I've done, and that will keep it from moving on me. It's going to be stable. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you how to do, I think, is to cut the carrot, and you will see, I'm going to see how I've got um, the tip down on the bottom of the cutting board, and then I'm going to cut this part, and I'm just going to, for um, time, um, I'm just going to show you that this rolls around. So you will want to cut this in half if you are a newbie. See how I'm doing this? I'm using the back of my knife. And now I have a flat surface. So if you have anything like a cucumber or a zucchini um, or a carrot, you now have a flat surface. And when you're chopping, you will put your fingers rounded underneath so that they're up against the knife and you, your thumb is not going to be out so that you're going to chop it off. Um, and then you're just simply going to make sure that they're all the same width because um, I'm going to show you in just a second if, now let's do this. So if I have one that's this thick, you see how these are all the same size? That means that they're all going to cook the same amount of time. But if I have one that's thin and one that's thick, we'll see that it, it takes 
more time for one to cook and less time for another. So if I get one done, then one's overcooked, or if I don't get the other one done, then the other one's undercooked. So you need to make sure that you're trying to get your parts and pieces all the same, whether you're cooking for a, a meal or whether you're doing a recipe for preservation. So you can see how, I'll do one more time, I have um, a flat surface, I have my fingers up against the knife, and I'm going to put my tip down, use the back of my knife, I'm going to move my fingers, and you can get faster at this with time, my thumb's not out underneath, and you see how everything's the same size? It's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to do that. And the wonder of the knife is practice. You just need to practice. Okay, so we've got some carrots done. Now I want to show you a cucumber. A cucumber is a little bit, I have washed all of my vegetables, but a cucumber is a little bit, uh, it's not as hard as a, um, and see, but it's bigger. And once again, this is why I would say, for ease, let's make sure that we cut it in half and see how I have my hand in between it. Uh, the knife is in between my fingers and I'm just going to cut right down, see how I'm using the back of my knife. And now I have a flat surface with which to cut. And I normally would do just one at a time. This skin is very tough, so we must have had now um, a, a not much rain while this was um, getting ripe. So a lot of people want to do this. They Instead of doing the rock in this way, they just want to chop down. They want to go like this. And you see how I don't have any control when I do that? You see how my tip is up? So you always want to keep your tip down, and you always want, if you have a round product, to try to have a flat surface. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is a pepper, and a pepper um, are, come in male and female versions, and this particular one has four lobes, so it's, it's a male pepper. Doesn't really matter, but these are easier to chop or to slice. When the, the female one has three, and so it's not quite as asymmetrical. And so the easiest way to do this, see how I have my tip down, so I'm eventually going to hit that, that uh, cutting board, and I'm going to... Um, then I'm simply going to pop this out. And with it will come the seeds, which I don't need or don't want. They're bitter. Um, I could save them and dry them and um, if I had extremely good peppers and then grow them next year. But that's how I'm going to get my seeds out. And then um, the easiest way to, to chop these is to let me use my little thing here and notice when I wipe this off and I'm doing I'm not because these are all going to go in a salad and I'm or I'm going to put them all in the same place I've washed them all already I'm going to um, use the same um, knife without washing and I'm going to use the same cutting board but um, if I had different types of things that were going in different things I would wash this and sanitize it all so notice when I'm wiping off my knife that my sharp edge is not towards my hand and then we'll simply with the tip down using the back of my knife I'm not I have no waste here not putting my fingers underneath the knife. I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. And then I can take a few of these at a time and then dice. And depending on how, how um, small or how large my recipe calls for, it may be determined whether I um, do a lot of chopping or just a little. Once again, see how they're all about the same size. And that's important when we're cooking or even for um, making things look really pretty. So I'll go from the green prepper, pepper, which this one is so sweet. Um, I'll go from the green pepper to hot pepper. And hot peppers you don't want to handle with your hands because um, they can especially the inside, have uh, um, a hot piece um, and, the, and the seeds are very hot that will cause you to burn. And so what you usually do is you handle the peppers and then you um, rub your eyes or you put your glasses up and then they burn. 
And so I, I, um, I make, I've made all the mistakes that there are to make. I've cut my fingers. I've had stitches. I've um, learned, um, just like everybody else. But um, I've also uh, done the hot peppers and um, put the hot in my eyes and was very unhappy about that. It took me, I think I may have called the doctor and all my friends and um, none of them um, t could tell me other than to wash it out. So this is a jalapeno pepper. I'm going to use my smaller knife because it's a smaller piece. I'm going to use uh, my fingers to hold it together. And when we open this up, you'll see that there are seeds. And the seeds um, are very hot, as is in this veining. And we usually remove this unless you were making hot pepper jelly, at which point you would leave it in there. And so, once again, I have a flat surface, and I can even use my little knife if I want to to chop my jalapenos the way I want them, or I can get my big knife back out. Now, um, I would probably want to um, rinse my board um, if I were going to do anything else, or um, my onion would taste like hot jalapeno peppers. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to do an onion correctly. So once again, you can save all the onion pieces. Um, I hate to waste, um, especially when I have good produce. I want to make sure that I'm using as much of my onion or my pepper or my um, jalapeno as I, I can. And so the best way to do this, and don't you love this red onion that I had in my box this week, is to cut it in half. And notice that I have left the the uh, root end on. So the onion grows this way with big green shoots. These are my roots and I'm going to leave that on. And once again, look, I have a flat surface. It's very important to have a flat surface when you're cutting. I'm going to cut off the end that has um, where my root, the um, shoots come out, the green shoots come out, and then I'm going to remove that outer skin um, even though I've washed it because it may be tough or damaged. Now I'm going to uh, put the root end away from me and I'm simply going to make little the size of the chop that I'm interested in. And you can do this with your big knife or you can do this with your little knife. Whichever one you have the most control with, then that is the one that you should probably use. And I'm going to take these off so I can feel what I'm doing. Um, now I'm going to um, slice away from my hand, but I'm going to hold this, but I'm going to slice it till I get to the root. I'm not going to keep going forward. Then I want smaller dices, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use this, but I'm not slicing towards any parts of my hand, and I'm going to slice till I get back to the root. Now I can turn my onion. I've still got it together, my point down, my fingers wrapped underneath so that I don't chop my fingers too, and now I am chopping the onion. Now, if you want to um, put this in the refrigerator for a little while or even the freezer, then you can um, keep down some of the chemical that allows your, you to start to cry. But you'll see that I've got this chopped in no time flat, and therefore I've used all of my onion, therefore I'm not going to cry. Might have something to cry about, but not when I'm not this onion. And once again, everything is the same size. So, um, learning to use your knife properly is a real important thing in um, cooking or food preservation, and I hope that you will practice and spend a little time thinking about the proper way to do it so that you can measure things correctly for your recipes. Mm -hmm.